all day like, yeah, all night like, what, whole squad like, yeah, in the field like, yeah, all day like, yeah, all night like, yeah, whole squad like, yeah, in the field like, yeah, all day like, yeah, all night like, yeah. You don't want problems, you don't want smoke, you don't want problems, yeah, you don't want problems, you don't want smoke. Hey everybody, it's the coach. And coach, we come at you from the shores of Lake Erie. EA Sports has the coverage of the NFL from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. Today we've got a week six matchup for you here between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cleveland Browns. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Time to look at the defensive starters for Cleveland. They're going to need to be strong against the run in this one. Now if they could just get their pass defense in line, this unit would be really, really strong. And remember the conversation with the defensive coordinator? He wants them to rush the passer better. He wants to see the quarterback on the ground. They've got to create some sacks. And he said it starts early and often. We'll see if they can get to him. Now Foles. Man open, it's Moss complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Let's go, defense! Let's go, defense! Here's Foles. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense, when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Give the tackle there to Morgan Burnett. This one out quickly to Westbrook. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. He'll look to throw. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 26. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now, I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Second and one. Into the hands of his tight end, Jeff Swain. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. 
They'll look to throw. First drive of the game. We did see this in practice, didn't we? Because they allowed us to stay and watch and see what the opening script would be, even though we don't know the exact play calls. That looks a lot like what we saw them execute, doesn't it? It really does. And in practice, it wasn't about a lot of big shots on that opening drive. They wanted to put together a series of plays, sustain it. They've done that. The defense now on their heels a little. That, that they are. And you know what else is happening now? They're gaining information. They're gaining knowledge about how the defense is planning on playing them. So not only are they being successful on this drive, they're filing things away for future drives in this game. Looking to throw. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. James O'Shaughnessy, his first touchdown on the year. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Building confidence after a loss, that's a good way to do it. The loss last game, but first drive here in this one, cashing it in for six. And they can talk all they want about putting a loss behind them. I think that drive there did more than any conversation they had, don't you think? That's exactly right. Puts that to bed, and this is what they said all week long. A lot of things they needed to do differently, but whatever they said appears to have worked. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 23. From the gun, Mayfield. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. A.J. Boye with a pick, and he'll return it to the 24-yard line. They could not ask for a worse start. You give up a touchdown on the game's opening drive, and then you turn right around and throw the interception on your very first play. And this is where the coaching staff has to earn its money because they've got to calm these guys down a little bit. Just as you noted, a horrendous start both sides of the ball. But now the defense, which gave up an opening drive touchdown, they've got to go out there now and start playing like the team they want to be. Now falls off the play fake to Fournette. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he sacked. Christian Kirksey gets him for a loss of five. He is so tough to handle on the blitz, and that's exhibit A. Well, Foles and the Jags now have to deal with a third and long after that sack. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time... And oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. And now off to the races. Down the right side. And they will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. Easton Stick. His first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. And no matter how it comes about, when you get good field position, you have to make the defense pay. Short fields usually make for good offense. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Cleveland offense ready to go. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Marcel Darius flies in at 331 pounds for the sack. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. It's been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Mayfield from the gun on third down. Got an open man. He completes it to Callaway. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. They'll run. This is Hunt. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it second down and 12. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football. They'll run with Hunt on second down as they've got it second down and 12. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. 
That's how you get right up off of the map because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. From the red zone now, Mayfield. And this is caught for Brown's touchdown by Landry. Jarvis Landry, his second touchdown on the season as they are now on the board here in the first half. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads him right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. Confidence never lost. And obviously he transmitted that to his teammates as well. What a really nice drive. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Foles and the Jags come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Now Leonard Fournette. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. The Jaguars on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and eight. And he completes it to Westbrook. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Kareem Hunt and the rest of the offense making their way back out there. And we checked the rushing numbers so far here in the week six, and the returns have been really good. Now, you're starting to hit that stride middle of the season toward the end. They're certainly hoping they can keep up this production. They are because one of the adages in the NFL is that defense travels and defense endures even in bad weather, right? You know what else does? A good running game. And people want that, especially as you head down the stretch. You may play outdoors in some nasty stuff. You're trying to get to the playoffs. This is the time to get it going. And individually, I don't think you should just think about 1,000 yards either. The bar has to be set higher with this beginning. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Hey, exit. To throw Mayfield. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by the Michigan man, Jake Ryan. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns 36. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Back to throw. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They decided to take a shot and right down the middle of the field. And really, they didn't give it as much time to develop, did they? They want to take that shot somewhere around the 15-yard mark. And the defense able to recover, bat it free. running out of steam and it won't get there he left it just short no good and this score will stay right where it is 
The Browns drive about to get started. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. We're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. Big yardage there for the Browns, 18. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter. 14 to 7. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. A.J. Boye with a pick. Trying to get it to Landry there. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. He'll drop to throw. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. And the Browns will take over, first and ten. The Cleveland offense ready to go. There was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You could never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by the Michigan man, Jake Ryan. He was looking for Landry that time. You're trailing, you're trying to get points late in half. I absolutely understand that. But remember, it's all about the ball. And without the ball, you can't get those points. They just turned it over. Now you got to be careful because that deficit can get a little bigger on the other side with that good field position they just took over with. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. How about this Browns defense they've held so far. This is now third and goal. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. How about this Browns defense they've held so far. This is now third and goal. They'll set up to throw. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. He's at the 50. 
the 30, the 20, 10, and he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. So from one end zone all the way to the other, talk about a turnaround. And how about the excitement that that play generates for his team? Not just the points on the board, but the momentum and taking it from coast to coast, end zone to end zone. What a tremendous play. Now get that man an oxygen tent. <laughs> That's your boy, Old Mo. You said momentum, right? Old Mo, he, I think he's kind of limping across at the end because of that distance, but he made it. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Let's go, Mo. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. And that is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only going to fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not going to be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And he's going to have a first down, but not sure it'll matter as the clock will continue to run. Seven yards there and a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first. You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. There's Baker Mayfield as he and the Browns offense comes back out. Any surprise in your mind he's out there to start the second half after four first-half interceptions? He's be surprised by a lot of things, partner, but in this case I'm not because you know they want him to be their guy. And the only way to truly establish that is to give him a chance to work through some of the issues he had in the first half. On second and nine, Mayfield. And he can't hang on. He had a good shot there for his third pick of the game. Instead, it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Mayfield to throw it. And that will be incomplete. So a stop here defensively to start. this third quarter just what's needed in a tie ball game. Yeah, good chance to build back some momentum on the defensive side of the ball. In fact, what they've done is give their offense a nice push in the back as they get ready to take the field. And this one goes angling out of bounds and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Gotta wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. He'll look to throw. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped go, inside the 40. Well, forget the run on third and one. They shot the D and rip Let's off go. a pretty big play. So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. A quick throw finding Lee out wide. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. On second down, here's Fournette. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. 
And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Terrence Mitchell right there on the coverage. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. Foles. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. So this time, the protection holds up for him just fine, and he's able to bang it through. I think their special teams coach got the point across. He gave him a pretty good earful after the block earlier, and this time, there's no penetration, so they're able to pick up three. Get ready. The Browns drive about to get started, and on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. He finds Beckham complete. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. His third touchdown now on the year. And once again, the Browns are back in front. So on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. But in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And now the throw taken in by Chark. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. That catch good for five. It's third down. Now falls. Man open, it's Moss complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Foles now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Here's Foles. The open man is Westbrook. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. Now back to throw. Completes it to Lee. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. On the run, it's Fournette. And an alley to run. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They'll run it again. 
again with Fournette. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And Fournette trying to power his way forward, but I don't think he got there. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll go with a big back foot in, and he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. And defensively, they were ready for that, a full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. A nice burst there as he'll get about seven that time on the first down run. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. They stay on the ground again. It's Hunt. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. The Browns on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. Back to throw. Chandler. And he's got this one complete to Callaway. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the Jaguars go on offense. First down and 10. Foles and the Jags come up now first and 10 at their own 26. They'll drop the throw. That's out to his running back for an end. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Looking to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And I think the Browns got it. They did. He let one slip away last week as well, so now two fumbles lost in as many weeks. Well, we were out of practice, and we watched him work. And what did his quarterback coach talk about all week? Being a two-hand monster. And we looked at each other, two-hand Oh, I get it, two-hand monster. Both hands on the football, taking care of it, putting it away so the ball doesn't get dropped. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Give the sack there to Jake Ryan. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. That will third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that. Hasn't Seems it? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they play some and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in. 
They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throw left side, complete. That's Lee. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing it. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at their own 42. They'll begin the drive with Hunt. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Push him back. They run again with Hunt. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Here we go. 70, Indy. Watch Twitch. Watch the Twitch. General West. Looking to throw, Chandler, hard throw, incomplete. That's it, baby. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is away and a very good kick, angled for the sidelines. And this one's out of bounds, should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to, like a good golfer can check one up. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Lee's got it over the middle. And they'll get him down up past the 15. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Back to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Back to throw. That'll be caught over the middle by Moss. And down he'll go at the 25. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He'll look to throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Greedy Williams picks it off. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. He's had it again, Charles. He had the pick six last week. Not a pick six here, but an interception. Yeah, it's another Oski, because that's the word we use when we intercept the pass. Oski tells your team to rally around and block for you. Well, that worked really well last week because he had made it all the way to the end zone. This week, he got the Oski. Maybe not a touchdown, but, boy, he's playing really well. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game.
So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Two times, two times. On third down, Chandler. A bullet throw, but incomplete. So decision time now, because a field goal keeps it a one-score game. What are you thinking? Well, I'm looking at the down and distance, and that's where the issue comes in. It's not short enough that it's a no-brainer and you go for it. You have to analyze this one. To me, you take the field goal, take the points. I don't think you want to risk coming away with nothing. And from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. A very good starting field position for the Jaguars' offense as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. He's going to let it fly. And he can't hang on to it. That would have sealed it. Instead, second down. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And he will not be able to get away as Foles is taken down. Well, we saw a close game that kept us on the edge of our seats down to that final whistle. And right before that final whistle, defense with one last exclamation mark there getting the sack to end it. I love how you phrased it because... We were waiting to see what would happen. Obviously, we thought something would happen downfield. Instead, it happens in the offensive backfield, and that's your ball game. So for the... Better 